Blake Griffin's his team's fifth scoring option, and that's turning out to be damn valuable for the Nets. You're about to see a breakdown of how he took over to stun the Milwaukee Bucks in Game 1. The man went all out by diving on the floor multiple times to force jump balls, which showed off how committed he is to winning. It certainly didn't seem that way back in Detroit, where with 20 games played for the Pistons this season, he failed to throw down a single dunk. But he was bought out by the Pistons on March 5th, and ever since he decided to chase a ring in Brooklyn, the man showing he has a lot left in the tank. The next 26 games in a Nets uniform saw BG dunk 23 times, according to Basketball Reference. But the resemblance of Lob City Blake has translated over to the playoffs. In the series against Boston, he posted two Celtic defenders on back-to-back -back possessions. Defense turned around in the season, but now... Oh! Tony Crawford hears it from the crowd. Talk about DeAndre Hunter has not played in this series. Again. As you're seeing, he doesn't quite get the lift like the Lob City version of himself, where he took the league by storm back in the early 2010s, but we're still seeing some beastly jams from the legendary Dunker in 2021. But here's what I didn't realize when I predicted this series, and I haven't seen a lot of people talking about it either, and it's how the former All-Stars perfectly adjusted his game for both the modern NBA and the current system he's playing in as well. There's always gonna be a roster spot in the NBA for a player who can space the floor out with a jumper and lay everything out on the line. But Griffin used to be the main option. This was a guy who was third in MVP voting back in 2014, and most players in his position who are aging and no longer capable of being a star, it's tough for their egos and playing styles to adapt to becoming a role player. The last time Blake was in the second round, was all the way back in 2015 when he was a young stud in the prime of his career at the age of 26. He was dunking on everyone. He was one of the best power forwards in the NBA as he made five consecutive all-star appearances. Of course, this was all before major knee injuries started taking a toll on his production. But Griffin was one of the scrappiest hard-nosed players in the league, a guy who was willing to lay everything out on the line for an extra possession. Blake and Zach Randolph's beef caused Griffin to earn the reputation of being soft, but really, that was Zebo being one of the toughest players of this generation. In reality, Blake was just standing up to a big-time challenge, and he had always left everything out on the line in the biggest moments, but I actually can't blame you if you were rubbed the wrong way when Blake didn't give it his all with the Pistons and suddenly flipped the switch after finally parting ways from Detroit. So it's easy to see why we were all so shocked when Griffin came out of nowhere to snatch a rebound away from Bobby Portis. Blake dropped 18 points, 14 boards, and four threes to help the Nets secure a game one win. And after that game, here's what BG had to say about people writing him off as a washed up player. In March about people talking about how bad you were coming into this Nets team. Um, I, I'm not even focused on that, to be honest. I, I'm just grateful to be here. The, the organization has been unbelievable. Fans have been unbelievable. Teammates have been great. Just let me get in my rhythm and, and do what I do. I've got top 10s, team videos, and rankings being posted in the near future as well. But if you want to see more quick takes after these playoff games, be sure to leave a thumbs up on this video and subscribe if you haven't already. This was D-Flow. Have a great day, and I'll see you next video.